Scam emails come in all shapes and sizes. And today I wanna to walk you through one of the scam emails that I got just last week, how I found out it was a scam and what I did about it. Hi, my name's Josh. Hopefully this kind of walkthrough will be helpful for you. Uh, I get these kind of emails all the time and believe it or not, you probably do too and you don't realize it. Some of these emails get automatically put in the spam folder, but some of them make it through. And this is one of those that made it through and I wanna show you exactly what happened. Okay, so a couple of weeks ago, I got this email from a woman named Jillian at Nodi Law. Uh, and it said basically that it's come to the attention of our client that this website, which you own, used his images without approval and without any proper credit to the copyright owner. Now, I take this kind of email seriously because I have, as a blogger with over 10 years of blogging experience, I have in the past used images inadvertently without the consent of the proper copyright owner, and I've been attacked by their lawyers. And so this is a very serious thing, and I didn't want to just throw it away or dismiss it as nothing. And she tried her best to make it sound very serious. Charges as high as $150,000. You have until April 30th to respond, or else we're going to have to take legal recourse. All of these things are meant to try to scare somebody who's receiving this email. Now, before I went and responded to her, I did a little research in the background. I wanted to find out if, first of all, I didn't want to click any links in the email. She didn't have any, but I didn't want to click any anyway. And I didn't want to go straight to the website because it could have malware. So the first thing I did, and I'll have links to all of these things, these resources that I'm using in the description below, but I first went to Google Safe Browsing Site Status. Essentially what it does is it lets me know if a website that it is in that is being crawled or that I'm trying to access has any malware or anything like that. So I'm going to search for nodylaw.com and tell Google, is this safe to go to? They said, yes, there's no unsafe content found. Good. So then I went to the website, which if you're trying to go to it now, you're going to find that it's actually non-existent. So please don't type this URL into your address bar. I'm sure that they still own it and they could forward you anywhere they wanted to. But the Nodi Law Firm website looks halfway legitimate. They've changed it since I first accessed it and it looks better than it once did. But it's still, it's just a one page website, which for a law firm is not very common in my opinion. So I would, that was the first red flag, just a one page website. I could try to call this phone number, but instead what I did is I made a who is lookup of the domain. So I went in and looked up who exactly owns the Nodi Law domain. And what you're going to find is usually there's not a lot of information that, that they'll give you, okay? They're going to hide behind um, some privacy on here. But one thing I did find industry interesting is that their name servers were IP China 163. Now, I don't know about you, but I highly doubt that a U.S. law firm would be hosting its website in China through a China web host. So that was red flag number two of the many red flags that we're going to run across. So then I decided, well, let's see what the address is. Where exactly is this location? So I went into Google Maps and I searched the address location and this is what I came up with, a field. I mean, if you turn around, we're actually in a neighborhood and it's not a very high-end neighborhood at that. So I can't imagine that a law firm would locate themselves here. It just doesn't make sense. And obviously this would be the third red flag that their address isn't correct. So the last thing I did here, which I thought would be kind of fun, is obviously the images here look somewhat real. The original images, honestly, were stock photos that looked ridiculous, so it was uh, quite clear. But these would be convincing to me if I were to see them. Um, so I took and I searched for Andrew's text here. I took Andrew's text and I searched for it in Google. And you know what I found? I happened to find a couple different law firms. First, the Jones Law Firm. The Jones Law in Manhattan apparently has three lawyers named, can you guess? Jillian Scott, Andrew Michaels, and Robert Jeffries. And there's yet another website, The Firm Partners, who have Jillian Scott, Andrew Michaels, and Robert Jeffries. The more that I dug, I finally realized where this was all coming from. There is a website template on the company page Elementor, which is a website building company for you know people that are wanting to create their own websites. And they have a template specifically for law firms called Markowitz and Mellencamp. It's not a real law firm. It's just a fake law firm that they've used to highlight their website. And if you look through here, it's just showing what you can do on your website. And the firm partners, as you probably can guess, is Jillian Scott, Andrew Michaels, and Robert Jeffries. Same exact text. 
They did go through, and instead of saying Markowitz and Mellencamp on the Nodi Law Firm, they changed it to Nodi Law, which was, wow, a lot of work on their part to really personalize this website. But essentially what they've done is they've scraped a template website, set it up on their own servers on Nodi Law, and tried to make me think that they're a legitimate law firm. So by now, it's pretty clear that this is not a real law firm. More than likely, this is a scam that Jillian's trying to do on me, but I'm interested to find out what she's doing. So I email, email her back and say, hi, Jillian, it's a pleasure to meet you. Can you please advise which images you believe are in violation of your client's copyright? I wanna see if she actually knows who I am and what if she's gonna actually send me a, an image. And she did. She said, hi, the first image on the website, on this webpage, and she sent that to me. Thankfully, I looked it up and found out that I did, in fact, have the rights to use that image. I had purchased the rights to that image, and so I was perfectly in the clear. No problems whatsoever. But I wanted to find out what she wanted. Oh, man, I'm so sorry, I said. What kind of credit or payment is your client looking for? I'm just a small blogger. Well, she replied, my client won't ask for payment due to the hard time we're all going through all over the world. She's trying to leverage the fact that we're all going through this COVID-19 pandemic at the moment, which I think is ridiculous. He would appreciate a credit link to his website under the image or at the end of the article, image, courtesy, and then the website. There you have it. They're looking for a link. That's it. I said, I prefer not to put links in my blog. Would you be willing to accept a payment? Nothing lower than $5,000, she says. I can't afford that. How about I just take the photo down? And she says, no, you already used the image and caused the damage to my client. So she's pushing. She's continuing to try to get me to add a link to the website and went on and on until finally I just called her out and said, listen, I know you're not a real law firm. Uh, and I asked her some questions about this scam to see if she would respond. And after that, I got nothing. Total silence. She took down the website. Uh, the email address no longer works. And I'm left to just wonder what new website she's putting up and new people she's trying to scam. So that's all it was about, a link. They wanted a free link on one of my websites. It's really hard for me to believe. And it really goes to show that not all scam emails are about getting your social security number or your credit card number or your banking information. There are a wide range of scams that could hit your inbox. If this video was helpful, give it a thumbs up. Let me know if this type of thing would be useful. I can share with you more of the scam emails that I get or leave a comment below with one of the scams that you've received. I'd love to hear that as well. Thanks for watching and take care.